Good morning. So yesterday at this exact same time, it was 55 degrees and gloriously sunny and a beautiful February day on Valentine's Day. This is February 15th at 11.45, it's 19, 15 degrees and it's snowing at the rate of one inch an hour. What does that have to do with today's topic? The risks and dangers of moving art and antiques? It's pretty self-explanatory when you think about it. Thank you for watching Behind the Gavel this week with Jason. I'm going to share this on my page here in just a second. And uh, one of the uh, things that we talked about regularly, just moving art and antiques. Last it's week we soft. talked to, we talked about, last week we talked about, we recapped Lord Doyle's conversation at the Art as an Asset Luncheon that I attended last week. Covered a lot, wide, wide range of topics about the insurance world, art world, antiques, and the insurance that covers it, and different stories and highlights that she has seen over the years. And this week I want to break down one specific topic, uh, the dangers and risks of moving antiques and art. <clears throat> Laura commented that her the most commonly seen claim against antiques and artwork and jewelry and collections happens because of moving and damage incurred when that happens. And so it just made sense to be able to, to bring in the weather of today in that conversation. Uh, obviously, if you were driving through the Midwest today, snow on the roads is a huge issue for the safety of your transportation and just the, the risks of an accident with antiques and artwork in your car increases and so that it makes a lot of sense but there's much more to it than that um go talk a little bit about what cold how cold and heat can affect objects and then some things that you can do to protect your items and just to have you think about these things before you move across country even across town uh, hire somebody to move your objects for you, which is something to really consider when you're out there, you know, just processing an estate or whatever your situation may be, bringing home a beautiful painting you picked up. And so one of the things, uh, a friend of mine, Nancy McGee, who I've known for 25 years here in Kansas City, uh, sent me a message about this and said, make sure you talk about the effects of cold on glass in China. And uh, that was uh, I, I was just thinking more of the, along the artwork conversation, but obviously this cold brings that conversation to the fore. So doing some research, I found out that glass is an interesting object. It's hard and brittle. It's extremely strong, but weak at the same time. And so many of you have probably seen or heard, you know, if you take a, a coffee pot and you take it, you just pour off the last bit of coffee, then you go to clean it out and you have cold water, the coffee pot can crack. Same thing with a you know, glass or anything like that. Well, the same thing can happen to antique glassware. A friend of mine was doing an antique show 30 or 40 years ago, and the vendors across the way were dealers in cut glass. And they had you know, brought their vehicle inside the show, was taking totes off of their trailer, and all of a sudden you heard these dings and cracks and nothing had happened except that the temperature change, the drastic temperature change, cause the objects to crack in the boxes. And I've seen this happen before when we have things come to the auction house, uh, to our office or before to our auction house in the West Bottoms. We would have people bring us things on a cold, cold day and immediately unpack them. And we would always say, we need to wait for those to come to room temperature so that you don't have the possibility of damage happening. And so what happens is, generally happens when an object goes from heat to cold. Excuse me, my allergies are bothering me a little bit. Usually when an object, glass or crystal, goes from a hot area to a cold area, what happens is the exterior surface cold, cools much faster than the interior of the glass piece. And oftentimes it can withstand that change, but glass, as many of you are aware, can have you know minute scratches and fractures and, and blemishes, and that is where the crack will start. If there's any weakness at all in the exterior of the glass, it will cause a crack to expand from that point, and that is where the damage will start from and occur. And we're working on it in the state right now, the uh, Coca-Cola sign and, and other objects in our current auction are from it. Well, they had 20 or so totes in the garage, and they didn't think anything else of it. <clears throat> but we moved them to the basement, uh, you know, last time we were there, so that they would acclimate to the weather, the temperature inside of the house before we unpack them. Because the last thing you want to do, and then we move them, it was a really cold day. But by moving them inside, they will slowly engage with the air in the, in the, in the house and 
and balance on balance come up to a you know static room temperature uh, because the heat and the cold re react differently. It does, it's not like it's all encompassed. It doesn't hit it all at one spot when you unpack it because you have your hands on it, which are extremely hot compared to the outside. Uh, and so you have these all these factors coming into play with glass and pottery in particular. So when you're moving objects across country, especially in the winter uh, or in the dead of summer when it's 100 degrees, what kinds of steps can you take to make sure that you're safe and secure? Well, if you can postpone until you know more tempered, uh, times of the year, whether it's spring or fall, you're going to be much, your, your load is going to travel much more safely. Thanks for joining us, Matt and Stacey. If you have any questions or anybody else watching has questions, please go ahead and comment here or say, say us a direct message on the uh, full contact information at the end. But if you can move objects when the temperature is more even, you know, the 70 to 85 degree range, 50 to 70, maybe even 80 degrees, your your objects are not going to have that huge stress from going inside of a house that's usually 62 to 75 degrees to the outside to a trailer to a car you know, a truck going across country anytime that you expose any object whether it's art or glass or furniture or sculpture to massive temperature changes you run the risks of a uh, the, the joints and furniture coming undone uh, veneer on furniture separating from the, the, the base materials. Uh, like we talked about before, silver and pottery can expand and contract depending upon the temperatures. Paintings, same thing, the oil paintings or whatever the substance is, uh, when you see the crack, you lure, the cracks in old paintings, that's because it's been exposed to temperature and or climate changes over the years, whether that's a really dry climate, high humidity climate, hot, cold, whatever it is, when you have that expansion and contraction of the objects, you have that risk. So if you could postpone your moves until more tepid temperatures, you're going to be a little bit more safe and secure. If you need to move during the heat of the summer or the brutally cold winter, it might make sense, depending upon the value of the assets and how much they mean to you personally, to pay the extra money for a high-end art shipping company. There are companies out there that actually move art and objects in climate-controlled vehicles uh, that never, ver never um, uh, deviate from a standard set of uh, temperature and climate control. So it's essentially like moving your living room at, at your living room temperature settings across the country. And they have teams of two or three people, so there's, the car is always moving, the vehicle is always moving, it's always running. And so you lessen your risk, but of course that, that costs a lot more than just a box truck and a couple of guys or renting a, a U-Haul yourself and, and running that across the country. Uh, so you really have to look at what's gonna cost you uh, in terms of expense and or uh, is the object worth it to you? Or does it make sense to, you know, this is one of the few times when storage might make sense. You could rent a climate controlled storage facility where you're at for a month or two, it's usually a couple of weeks gets you usually in and out of the, the, the worst of it. So if you rented a you know, climate control storage facility for two months for two or $300, it might make a really smart investment to do that uh, so that you're not moving in the middle of the heat or the middle of the cold. <clears throat> Beyond that, if you're, let's say you're shipping a painting back home, same kind of thing holds true. If you go into your mom and dad's or your grandparents' estate to clear things out and there's two paintings that you want, uh, but it's right now, it's 15 degrees. It's going to be 5 degrees, 10 degrees, 0 degrees overnight. Uh, you want this on a UPS truck, you know, a plane overnight, flying at altitude where it's going to be 20, 30 below zero in the cargo? Probably not. So again, if you have a place, you can store it for a little while until the temperatures change. Um, and again, you can always upgrade moving services to allow for that and take into effect those situations. Most shippers are not equipped to move fine art on a regular basis. Smaller pieces, things that have, you know, five and $10,000 in value, which is significant, but it's not huge, they can usually handle. You get the things in the $50,000, $100,000 and up, you really wanna make sure that, ask these questions of the shipper. How was this going to get from Kansas City to Denver or from Kansas City to New York? Is it going to fly? Is it gonna drive on a train? You know, could you be transported in a train or a truck? Um, and ask those questions because they can tell you and sometimes it might make sense to send a ground as opposed to flying it through the air because of that reason it might take longer but it might be a more secure ride uh, and not have that drastic exposure to the climate changes 
what other things can we talk about? So if you're moving it yourself, which we often do, right? We always, you know, a lot of us watching this go to estate sales, go to auctions, uh, stop at thrift stores. If you're moving things yourself, just take that extra bit of time as opposed to just throwing the painting in the back seat or dropping the bag in the back floorboard. Carry a blanket or two with you so you can pad and secure something for moving. And I'll tell you, it's not so much how you wrap the object, it's how you secure the object, right? So a glass vase sitting in a chair is not going to get damaged no matter what happens to it, right? If you can keep it stationary in that chair or in the floorboard. So you don't need to wrap the glass vase to within an inch of its life. But if you can put that in a floorboard and put a blanket around it so it can't move and nothing can fall on it, well, that's going to be much safer than in three layers of bubble wrap because, you know, a, a vase and bubble wrap can roll around and hits the back of your chair. It could crack through the bubble wrap because it's a sudden impact. Whereas if it's stationary, it can't move. Same thing for paintings. Uh, the last thing you want to do is, oh, if you have several paintings and you stack them up, always, 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 when you're stacking paintings or for anything in frames, front to front and back to back. And we say that because the back of almost every picture frame has either eye hooks or hangers of some sort that will scratch the front of the frame in behind if you stack them up back to front, back to front. If you go front to front, the finished sides of the frame, they can still rub. So you want to make sure you keep them from moving, but they're not having that that hard, you know, that, that single point on a larger surface that can scratch. When you're front to front or back to back, they're common areas. The back, you know, the back sides. It doesn't matter if the back of the frame gets scratched by the eye hooks. Uh, it just matters if the front does. So front to front and back to back on any and all pictures and frames, and use the frames as your packing material. We've had we have to do this sometimes regularly, depending upon the collection we're picking up, uh, and then secure those pieces together. A piece of cardboard between, and make sure that nothing can move. And you've done a really fantastic job just to secure it in place. Again, movement is your biggest concern. Bubble wrap and those things are fine, but movement in any situation is your much bigger concern than the bubble wrap around it. Even if you have a tote, <clears throat> you know, a piece of Rickwood pottery, that's a wonderful piece. If you have a piece of Rickwood pottery in a big box and you put it in bubble wrap and leave it in there and you have to slam on the brakes and that thing goes, goes from one side of the box to the other, well, you run the risk of having it crack. And so the last thing you want to do is have movement in your objects when you're moving them if you're doing it yourself. Got to run, love the notch. Thanks for watching, Matt. I appreciate you watching. Hit the like button and, and putting the comment in there. But, uh, yeah, we do this every week. I'm behind the gavel with Jason. I'm kind of getting ready to wrap this up. Again, when you're moving things on your own, secure the cargo. Make sure it can't move. Make sure it can't rub against each other or other objects, and it doesn't have the opportunity to, with a sudden stop, that it's going to move and stop quickly. That's your biggest concern. If you're using a professional shipper, ask those questions. Is it going to fly? Is it going to drive? Is it going to go on rail? Uh, what are the methods they use? What are the different costs? Have they moved valuable assets before? Uh, and if you can wait until the, the temperature and weather is more tepid, you're going to be much further ahead in your risk, uh, your risk profile. Again, thank you all so much for watching. We're going to go ahead and sign off here today. It's uh, Again, it's snowing at about the rate of an inch an hour, so we'll probably leave the office early today on Friday. We had some things we had to get done, including this video for you all. But uh, check out our current auction. Uh, it's all over our Facebook page. Antique Trader just posted about it as well. We're excited about that partnership. If you have any questions, go ahead and post them here. Send us a direct message. If you like this video, please hit the like button, the share button. Tell your friends and family that we do this every week. I'm behind the gavel with Jason. We take an interesting topic in the world of antiques, art, estate liquidation, and kind of delve into it on a deep but shallow basis. We're only doing about 15, 20 minutes, generally speaking. So thanks for watching. You can always send us an email at info at kcauctioncompany.com. kcauctioncompany is spelled out dot com. You can always give us a phone call at 816-283-3633. Post a message here, send us a direct message, or just stop by the office sometime. We'd be happy to talk to you. Thanks again for watching. Have a great weekend. Hope you had a great Valentine's Day, and we're all looking forward to March and spring, I am sure.